Out here, Warren Industries stands for one thing, excellence. On the trail, on the slick rock, in the woods. Blending their good ideas with innovative thinking to help shape modern off-roading. Much of what they do feeds a hungry market of off-road enthusiasts. Once a product leaves Warren Industries, it's ready to go prepare. What's up, Facebook world? Thanks for joining us, uh, Southern Four Wheel Drive, for our fifth Southern Four Wheel Drive TechNet series. Um, so last week, we had the BF Goodrich. Uh, tires are sexy with Jonathan from BF Goodrich and Charlene Bowers, a lady off-road network, talking about how tires really are sexy. Uh, you guys had some great questions, great comments, and it was an awesome tech net. So for this one, we've got something cool planned again. We have brought on Warren to talk about winching. And man, let me tell you what, this is going to be awesome because this is one of my favorite, absolute favorite uh, subjects to talk about. I love winching, talk about it all day. So I'm super excited to have Warren here. And they are at Clemson Four Wheel Drive Center again with the opportunity because Clemson Four Wheel Drive Center is one of the top Warren shops uh, on the East Coast. So uh, they have Brad Goodfellow from Warren there, along with Roger from Clemson Four Wheel Drive. And they're going to discuss kind of winching 101 and maybe even get the chance to look inside and see what actually makes a winch work. So for you guys that are here tonight watching us, make sure right that you smash that uh, uh, share button, let everybody know to get these videos out. It helps Southern Four Wheel Drive get their name out. And remember, if you're not a member of Southern Four Wheel Drive, what are you waiting for? Do it. www.sfwda.org. Go become a member. Enters you for a chance to win a set of BF Goodrich tires at the Dixie Run, and you don't have to be present to win. So now, without going any further uh, in-depth on anything, and I'm not going to try to steal their thunder on winching, we're going to pass it on to Roger and Brad over at Clemson Four Wheel Drive Center. So sit back, be ready with your questions, and remember, preface questions in the comments with a cue. Have fun, guys. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. I'm Roger Dalrymple with Clemson Four Wheel Center here in South Carolina. I want to thank Southern Four Wheel Drive Association for bringing their TechNet program back to Clemson Four Wheel. And we're, tonight's topic is winches, and I want to welcome Brad Goodfellow from Warren, who is going to bring the rest of the program. Brad? All right. Thanks, Roger. Thanks, Al. Uh, thanks, everybody, for, for taking some time to join us tonight. Uh, I know we're all anxious to get back in the woods, and I know some of us have been able to get back in the woods here recently. So uh, it's good to see. Uh, let's hope everybody's healthy and safe out there. But uh, winch is always a great topic. It's a great tool on an off-road off vehicle. And... Uh, Want to give you a little bit more insight on what's actually going inside that uh, that aluminum box on the front of your rig, uh, some of the best ways to take care of it, and uh, really just to you know, answer your questions, but also, like I said, give you some of that insight you know, into what's going on inside there. Um, thanks, Roger, for, for hosting us. Um, they've been a Warren Service Center for way longer than I've been around. Um, and uh, just been a great supporter as, as Southern Four Wheel Drive is as well. So we'll go through some winch basics here real quick, um, and then we'll, we'll even get into the back and get into the, uh, the inner workings of a winch there. So 72 years Warren's been in business, uh, and you know, partnered with Clemson Four Wheel Drive, they've been here for 50 years. This is their 50th anniversary, which is just awesome to see a uh, good family-owned business like this holding on and uh, still going strong. So you'll see the shops full of vehicles right now. We got some work going on in the back. But um, Warren's been doing this, uh, like I said, since 1948. Really started with a way to make the military Jeeps that were coming back from World War II, make them more drivable, make them more usable on the road. So the biggest thing was, you know, get them steering, get them working down the road a lot easier with the, with the uh, lockout hubs. So you can disengage those front tires when you're riding on the road increase the fuel mileage and that kind of stuff. Um, so since 54, Warren's been making the OE hubs for four wheel drive axles. So, you know, the OEs picked up on, hey, it is a good thing. It saves on drivetrain wear, it saves on everything else. So the hubs is really where Warren started. A company down the street from him called Bellevue started making electric winches. Uh, before that, 
uh, winches on you know heavy duty industrial equipment was all PTO driven, which means the the engine had to drive, you know, the transmission drove the winch. So it was either you were winching or you were driving. You couldn't do both. Um, and then you also had to have the engine running before you could be using the winch. So when they came up with an electric self recovery winch, using the battery as a, as a reserve, that's the the best you know the best most efficient way. You can drive, you can run the winch at the same time. They ran independently of each other and uh, really was the most efficient system for that. You know, those old winches um, started, you know, kind of an upright where the motor sat through, it ran through some spur gears and, and, a, and a various uh, gear train, um, kind of a big bulky piece. Um, we still make that upright winch just because it does have advantages of it. Um, we call it our 8274. It's been around since 1974. And it's really con current configuration. It's been through a lot of different iterations now. The most current ones, obviously, are up to a 10,000 pound rated. Um, they run 80 feet per minute, uh, just because of the efficiency of it. We'll get into some of the brake design and and some of the details of that here in a little while. But uh, it is a big, massive winch. Then in the 80s, we started making really small winches for the ATVs. You know, obviously the ATV market was exploding, and now now you've got UTVs out there as well. Um, but just the smaller vehicles, smaller winches. So we were, you know, trying to pioneer that 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 market there and, and provide that recovery for those smaller vehicles as well. Constantly innovating and, and bringing quicker um, quicker systems, being conscious of, of the weight of the vehicle, and then really transitioning everything to the you know planetary style winches that you see on most vehicles now it's more that linear winch control pack is up on top or mounted off to the side um, but that's the style of winch that's that's coming into the you know, into the market now uh, and then we introduced the xeon winches in 2013. Uh, you know first mainstream centered winch waterproof contactor controlled um, zinc drum where the you know and we'll go through some of those features on that there but um so that's just you know kind of the what what warren's been doing um obviously the rest of the market's been following suit pretty pretty close so selecting the right winch for your vehicle um general rule of thumb is always one and a half times the loaded gross vehicle weight of your rig so we got some examples there up on the screen on the slide there you know a tj's what I think it's like 4,700 pounds, 4,800 pounds. So one and a half times that uh, is about 7,900. It's an 8,000 pound winch is more than enough to, to pull that vehicle with uh, over most obstacles or over most you know stuck uh, situations. JK is obviously a little bit bigger vehicle. You're going to get into a nine or 10,000 pound winch for those guys. Um, full size trucks. You know you're getting some big. Uh, gross vehicle weights, you know, that loaded weight of 9,000 pounds and most 2,500s, that's where you're getting into a 15,000 pound winch. Now, keep in mind, that is a single line winch pull. So, um, you know, on that three quarter ton truck, a 15,000 pound pull, you know, straight out of the winch, straight to the, uh, to your anchor point. It's also on the first wrap of the drum. So, the more cable you can get out, the less you're working your, you know, the less strain there is on the winch you know the most it's like running it in first gear and then the second wrap second gear third gear and so on so you lose efficiency with each wrap of the winch um which also puts more strain on it and that kind of stuff um, the other thing to so, think about is if you're you know heavily weighted you got a trailer behind or you're recovering a vehicle that's heavier than yours you can always use a snatch block and double that capacity so we'll get into some rigging basics at the you know towards the end but basically keep in mind every line that comes out of that winch is, a, is the full capacity of the winch so batteries and alternators obviously this is the driving force of your winch this is this is where it's getting its power from the 650 cold cranking amp batteries a minimum to to run a winch that's um, measured on how much reserve the battery has you know how long how much power it can give up um, at, at you know um, at zero degrees so um, very you know stressful on the battery that, but your winch is is capable of pulling you know three four hundred amps in a planetary style the older uprights while they're faster they also pull a lot more draw so you can get six or seven hundred amps 
um, of a draw on the on the big old upright winches. So uh, it's one of the reasons you know the planetary style has become a lot more popular. But if you think about your 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 vehicle starter, which is the main reason your battery is there, um, small motor runs you know five ten seconds most at the most. Um, so your winch is a definitely a much higher draw. Um, you know, you're running it for longer periods of time. You're creating more heat with it. You now it's designed to run, you know, like that, but it is going to put a stress on that on the on the system. So, while you're winching, make sure the vehicle is always running, um, and monitor that. Uh, you know, monitor your voltage because you can, even though the vehicle is running, you're gonna you're gonna overrun your charging system. You know, charging systems are getting great. They're 230, 250 amps now, but your vehicle is also taking a lot more electricity. You, you throw a 300 amp load on there, things may start shutting down if you're not, you know, if you drop it below 12 volts. So, then, and, the, and the, keeping the cable connections clean and super, super tight is is paramount. Um, a little bit of corrosion in between there. You know, if you're running, if you're trying to run a winch on you know, 10, 11 volts because you've got a bad connection, things are going to get hot. Things are going to get uh, uh, just not work very well at all. So. You know, and we'll do some questions and answers, like Mike said at the end. Um, so, if, you know, if anybody's got any any comments or questions on there, uh, throw them up there, and, and we'll we'll take care of those at the end. There, we got just a, a typical planetary winch. There, we got one of the Xeon winches. Um, you can kind of see, you know, just kind of the basic parts. This is what you see at, out of the box. But we're going to head to the back now and dive a little deeper into what's what's behind that winch and uh, what's inside of it. And uh, we'll head into uh, Clemson's uh, service center here now. Back in the service bay, where the guys bring them back to life, fix what's broke, and uh, just keep keep the winches working. Uh, lots of spare parts here. If you ever need anything, this is this is an awesome place to come. But we kind of got all the pieces parts of a winch blown out here. So kind of wanted to start with the electronics. Um, so what happens when you actually push the button on the remote? So older winches, you got solenoids. So basically just mechanical um, switches. So you use a little bit of power from the remote, activates a magnet, closes a contact, and then runs high volt, you know, high amperage through the solenoid, and then runs power to the motor. And then it reverses the polarity, so you need four solenoids in your control pack. You know, for some redundancy to make sure that things shut off when you let off the button and also to be able to reverse that motor and turn that motor either forwards or backwards. Where we've gone from those, still good reliable system, but it takes quite a bit of amperage, so it's a little bit more wear on the, on the remote switch and that kind of stuff, kind of limits you what you can do with your remote. Now we've gone to basically a contactor. So much, much more refined. This one is able to be completely sealed from the elements, uh, and it takes a lot less amperage to activate the switches, the internal switches in here. So this is a much more efficient um, system. It's a lot more compact than, than all the wires and stuff running between four of these guys. Um, so this is a much, uh, much nicer setup, much more efficient, allows us to run wireless, it allows us to run you know, longer remote cords and that kind of stuff. So. Um, but, uh, so what this does takes the power out of the battery and moves it into the motor. So good heavy duty motor. And we'll go into that in, in a minute here, but you know, the motor will run and you can stall it. Um, typical electric motor, heavy duty, you know, windings in there. Um, but a motor will burn. You know, pretty much as soon as you stall it out. So you've got, you know, if you hold that button down when things aren't moving, you can burn this up real fast. Um, real easy to see once you pull that end cap off, things are just toast in there. So it'll take a lot of abuse, but as long as it's moving and as long as it's got, you know, at least 12 volts, you should never have any problems with them. So, so going from there, that motor drives, you know, the drive shaft that goes through and then basically the, you know, goes through all the gearing and the back end of the drum. Um, but a big thing we wanted to look at was the braking system. So this motor drives through the brake. So this, this here would go through the drum. And what you've got inside here is 
this is driven here, and it, it basically, when the motor's turning, it can spin. So it's releasing this brake. There's six brake shoes in this one. This is one of the heavy-duty premium brakes here, uh, like what you'd find on a Xeon Platinum. So as that motor's turning, that brake is allowed to, to move, and it's turning the, the drive shaft, which is turning the drum. As soon as you let off this and release the pressure from the motor, that brake takes over and stops that drum from turning. So why that's important is the electric motor has no resistance when it's not turning. So if you let off that that the remote, this, the winch stopped, you know, the motor stopped turning, this this drum would just free school then. Or if the brake is not strong enough, you'd be able to you you'd lose some more cable, you lose the, the the progress that you made with the winch. So a strong brake is a huge safety factor. Um, Brakes in the warm winches, durability, reliability-wise, we still put them inside the drum. It's been the proven system. There's the fewest moving parts in a planetary winch. We get the most brake service out of it. Um, and then from you know the recreational winches, like what you see on your Jeeps and trucks, all the way up to you know our big industrial stuff. So you know safety factors are higher on this kind of stuff, but you can see the size of, of these brakes are huge. So. So, brake, drive shaft, goes through the different drums. Now we've got a steel drum here. So if you've ever, anybody has ever seen this, but basically that drive shaft is going through here. The brake is down inside there. Drive shaft goes through into the, into your gear set over here. But steel drum, cable hooks into the side, or rope, whichever you got. Um, this type of drum, obviously you've got to have the, Got to have it full of cable or full of rope. So this one, you know, you've got to maintain those wraps on there so there's enough tension there because this doesn't. All this does is, is get you started, gets the rope started. Um, if you step into the Zeon, you've got a Zeke drum. Obviously, won't rust, but the rope mounts through the drum. So. Always best to keep some wraps on there, but if you run into a situation, this one will pull its full loaded rate right through the drum, since that rope actually goes through the drum. Uh, you can use every bit of your rope on a Xeon. Uh, like I said, keep that first wrap on there whenever possible. Emergency situation to get you going, get those first 10 feet pulled or so, you can use all of that. But good heavy cast zinc drum. And if you notice, like I said, the drum goes in this way, the motor's on this side, but it's driven from the opposite side of the, of the motor. So these, these cogs out here are actually what's being turned by the planetaries. So, so we'll go through the, um, the gear reduction of a, of a planetary style, um, you know, a, a gear driven winch, or winch here. Um, the other important part, so brake. You don't see the brake, but you appreciate it being there. Um, definitely keeps it safe. What you do appreciate is being able to free spool and pull the cable out by yourself, you know, without having to run the motor. So when you turn that lever on your winch, you can see what it's doing is it's simply just turning a, a cam in there, whether it's a newer Xeon or one of our old traditional style. You know, this one runs a hundred, a full 180. But what that's doing. It's engaging that lever into these slots on your um, ring gear. So that ring gear fits in here, fits into the case. It's either here. So right now this is in free spool. So that gear is not, none of those planetary gears are even connected to anything right now, which allows the drum just to spin freely, allows you to unreal the, the cable or the rope. Once you engage it, now, as soon as it hits that stop, so the older style like this, there's there's quite a bit of there's quite a bit of gap in there. So you you know you've got some space in there before it engages. On the newer ones, you'll notice that the handle moves a lot smoother. And you've got a lot fewer engagement points, so that keeps that moving a lot a lot smoother for a lot longer. So so if you look down in there, we got two different sets of of uh, ring gears. And as we go through the drivetrain here, first little gear here is called our sun gear. So that fits in the very end.
and that's what our motor is connected directly to. So we'll do a little do a little, little spin in here. So simulate our electric motor, the drums in here. So one to one. So as fast as this shaft is moving, that gear is moving. So we get you know a few thousand RPM out of that. First stage planetary. So see real heavy duty planetaries, all steel. So that one will go in there. And what you've got is you've got your satellite gears. So we'll line it all up here. So what we're doing is taking this shaft and turning that in internal gear, turning it through those satellite gears into a reduction, probably a six to one or so reduction into this gear, obviously, and then getting us the this is like your low range in your transfer case. So everybody out there with you know old Dana 300s, NP205s, that kind of stuff, you're you're still using the upright uh, technology. Uh, it's that direct gear driven. Um, but all the new process, you know, your 231s, your 241s, all that kind of stuff is got a planetary in there. When you engage low range, now you can see this is moving a lot slower than the drive shaft. So when you hear, you know, you hear which is advertised, three stage planetary. Okay, do I get the shift gear from my winch? What, what's, what's going on in there? So first stage, second stage, third stage. So obviously it's the smallest, provides the first level gear reduction. Second stage has got to be a little bit bigger because that one's got you know mechanical advantage into this bigger stage here. Now this is our second stage planetary. So drop that in there. So again, the uh, driven gear is is driving driving the next stage, driving the satellite gears, and now you can see how much more we lost. So. Said we can release that clutch, and that's where that's where you get your freewheel. But we're driving it now. So, and then there's one more big thick ring that goes on the next piece. You know, basically the the, the the housing of the winch, and then that's where we get this third stage planetary, this final drive here. So that drives the drum. So that'll slide. So basically, this one will. Will engage into the drum, and then that's what's driving. That's what's driving your actual cable in there. So, so that's that's how planetaries work. Lots of gears in there. We're getting two to three hundred to one kind of ratio in there, and that's really the biggest difference between your you know your capacities on your winches. You know, obviously, we can uh, modify the motors. I mean, motors can be, you know, we can put bigger, stronger motors on there. But your biggest difference is in this gear ratio, and that's also where you get your, your speed. So bigger motor equals higher amp draw, more more load on the vehicle. Lower, you know, higher gear ratio means less draw on the motor, but obviously a little bit less line speed, which you may be able to run the winch a lot longer too. So um, quick comparison here between some of the worn parts and some of the competition parts. But this is a first stage planetary. But you can see it's cast aluminum. There's pop rivets in there, so a lot thinner gear train. Um, just you know, just be careful of what you're buying out there. Um, there is a, there is a difference in you know longevity and durability. Uh, and then the last thing we put out here on the bench: Why does a winch need to be waterproof? Winches don't need to be waterproof, but if they're not waterproof, they need to be serviced. So if you let all the grease go, if you let it sit full of water for a long time, this is what you end up with. This one actually still turns, just not very well. But so if you don't have a waterproof winch, make sure you're heating it up after you dump it under the water. Make sure you take it apart you know, once a year. Get some new grease in there. Clean all that junk out of there. If your winch is nice and sealed and waterproof, you don't have to worry about it. Probably not a bad idea to when you do major rebuilds. You might take it apart and look at it see what's going on make sure you got some good grease in there uh, but the waterproof is designed to be you know, kind of a maintenance free winch but uh, that's kind of going through you know you know from from motor to drivetrain and on how it all works um, we will talk about it up front here when we get back up there you know kind of steel cable versus synthetic rope I know that's a big question everybody's got and uh, we'll hit some of those highlights here but let's uh, let's run back up front 
and uh, get back to Alvin. Come back here. Good. Behind the scenes, it comes in four-wheel drive. All the worn parts are hiding in there. Bearing whatever you need. Back on? We're back out. All right. So thanks, everybody, that stuck with us. Uh, obviously, the internet's taxed right now, and uh, we're just uh, we're just along for the ride. Uh, I think we were at Chuck and the durability of the wireless remotes. Um, what I started to say was quality remotes should last a good long time. You know, we see a lot more loss, replacement, or battery failure is really the only thing I see. Uh, I know with the worn remotes. Um, Biggest complaint I ever get is people struggle with them because they all got to you know got to repair them uh, periodically. Uh, but other than that, um, I think they, they hold up pretty well. Uh, I can't speak for the other ones. Uh, I know there's a there's a lot of electronics out there that can get really cheap. So, all right. And from Pam, what is the usual life expectancy of a synthetic winch line? Uh, loaded question there. Um, Depending on the on the quality of line and the and the use, um, make sure when you're getting a winch line that it is UV protected. Uh, they are a plastic. It's a it's a polyethylene plastic. So if it is not UV protected and it's an exposed drum winch, you know if it's right out in the open and it's, it sees the sun all day every day, uh, it will deteriorate. You know within a couple years, pretty um, pretty regularly. So make sure it's got a UV protectant on the rope. Um, make sure you keep the rope clean. And like we said, keep attention on the drum. And you should get, I've used rope for, for over 10 years uh, with, on the same rope, but it was buried in the drum. I kept it clean. It was buried in the bumper and that. Uh, Roger, have you seen anything different? No, I, I've been using the same one for five or six years. And like I said, keep it clean and uh, not always sitting outside during the day, you know, that little bit of sunshine it doesn't get them. I, I don't see that they're much less durable than the, than the wire rope. Gotcha. So far. All right. From uh, Jay and Cody, uh, basically same question. How often should I service or grease the gears? And uh, from Cody, rule of thumb on when to tear down, clean, and grease my winch. All right. Um, so yeah, we kind of touched on that at the very end of the, of the teardown time back there. Um, if it is a non-waterproof winch, uh, I would say every season, uh, especially if you're in a wet climate, you know, just the rain and the moisture, you know, the heat heating it up, and then you know, cooling off at night, it's gonna it's gonna attract moisture into it. So clean it out once a year if it's a non-sealed winch. Um, if, like I said, if it is advertised as a waterproof winch. I would say, you know, if you start hearing noises, or if you're going through, you know, major rebuild on the vehicle, you know, obviously you're replacing fenders, painting, and and you know, redoing a lot of stuff. I would take that opportunity because that happens, I don't know, every three to five years kind of deal. Take that opportunity to take the winch apart as well. Um, I know with my products, with the worn products, you can always get service parts. Because, you know, you can always get gaskets. Um, and that kind of stuff to, to put it all back together and make sure it's, it's just a maintenance thing, you know, so. All right, and from Blake, is there a replacement drum upgrade for older winches like the XD9i that lock the cable to the drum like the Xeon does? Nope, uh, unfortunately not. So those using the steel drum, um, very specific to the winch model as far as length and diameters and all that kind of stuff. Um, so unfortunately not. And from TJ, what's the best way of grease to use? Well, uh, most of the worn winches that are uh, grease lubricated, uh, the 8274 is not, it's all, but the, uh, the planetary winches use a uh, molly lube. Uh, it's basically a, a, a forward spec wheel bearing grease. But uh, just make sure it's a black grease usually. I know we use a Valvoline here in the shop, uh, molly lube, and uh, so it, it's easy, easily bought at local parts stores. And from Carson, how do you know if your winch is waterproof? So, obviously, most of the time they, they advertise it real big because that's a, that's a selling feature on there. If it's if it's a worn winch, if it's a Xeon, 
or if it's a VR Evo. Uh, those are the waterproof ones that we've made. Um, some of our late, late model XD9Is and that kind of stuff, uh, we did start introducing some waterproof uh, to features to those, but Xeon and VR Evo uh, for, for, for my winches. For the other brands, like I said, you just got to rely on the advertising. Um, look for the IP68. That's that's the kind of the standard waterproof that means it can be you know, submerged a meter deep for 30 minutes, that kind of stuff. But IP68 means that it's you know it's been it's been certified waterproof. Let me mention on waterproofing too that winches that never get used they they do condensate. That, that moisture can get inside even if the winch has a leak. So exercising your winch once a month by turning it into, uh, you know, disengage the clutch, pull out 25 feet of rope, wind that rope back in, make sure the motor runs out and in. Uh, just, you know, once every month for six weeks goes a long way towards making sure your winch is going to be there for you when you need it. Gotcha. And from Jeffrey, can the controllers be used on any winch? This one, stick with the brands. So if you've got, we use a five pin remote uh, and we have probably the last 20 years. Yeah, about that. So we went from a three pin to a five pin remote. So as long as you know, you count those pins in there, there are five of them and the, and the remote fits, you, you're probably pretty good. We've got some winches with an extra pin for feedback and that kind of stuff, but you can still plug a standard remote in and make the winch work. You just don't don't get to see what the winch temperature is doing. Um, so, between you know, among brands, Warren for sure. Most of the other brands, uh, it's probably true as well. But I know for sure that Warren, um, you know, across your Warren offering, you can use the same remote. Warren switched over in about 1980ish to the plastic plug on the winch and the plastic on the remote that you plugged it into and uh, before that it was a metal plug but anything made with that plastic plug anything from basically around 1980 and later whether it's three pin or five pin or six pin the current remotes are backwards compatible they will operate those older winches so new remotes will operate the older winches some of the new winches cannot be operated with the older remotes but uh, they have the new remotes are backwards compatible and uh, from Christy, what is the best way to wind up winch cable uniformly? So the best way is two people. One person in the in the driver's seat applying a little bit of brake pressure and somebody else out with a, with a set of gloves a good you know, 10, 15 feet away from the front, front of the vehicle, you know, watching that cable and guiding it on nice and smooth. Uh, if you do have to do it by yourself, it's Put a wrap on there, check it. Put a wrap on there, check it. So you're in and out of the vehicle a bunch. Uh, if you check out warn.com, we do have some winch um, tensioning videos on there that kind of show you how to put that on there nice and uniform. So. And from Tim, should you ever connect a hook to the ball of a hitch? No, never, Absolutely ever, not. ever. The, the, um, I don't know how many I've seen. Trailer ball indentations and hoods and tailgates and the trailer ball is a that's the only thing it's strong for. Uh, toe straps, winch cables, nothing to, nothing other than a trailer coupler should be hooked to a trailer ball. So that's what D rings are for. That's what toe points are for. Um, yeah, ball is not a strong anchor point. And finally, I think this is the last one uh, from Chuck. Winching vehicles with no recovery points. So that one, if you get on a towing like supply site, uh, it's it's a great piece to put in your recovery bag, especially if you're out on the highway a lot. You'd like to stop and help people that you know may not be in an off-road type vehicle. Um, so vehicles without recovery points usually have holes in the in the subframe in the, in the unibody that is designed for you know, anchoring them to, you know, train cars and that kind of stuff, or, you know, recovering them, hooking them to flatbeds. So they sell a little kit that's got a bunch of pieces that fit in those holes in those unibodies. Um, that's a great way to, to do that. Um, you can buy those little sets. It's just a, it's a ring of little tools. I don't know, probably a hundred bucks or better. Yeah. Um, but it's a great piece to put in your recovery bag, especially if a lot of people rely on you, or if you find yourself off, off 
off-road with you know some of the lighter you know CUVs and that kind of stuff. Um, that's a that's a great little tool. Uh, I wish I had a picture of one, but it's a bunch of little T pieces, a bunch of little cast iron pieces that fit into all kinds of frame holes. So let's bring Mike in and see if he has any comments. Yeah. Okay. I had one more question. Can I get one more in real quick? Yes. Of the it's absolutely. Extremely quick. Renee Hill mm -hmm. held up one. Uh, from Tim, I believe it was, does Clemson Four Wheel Center service winches for the less than mechanically inclined? And yes, we do. We're actually a Warren warranty authorized service center, so we have replacement parts for worn winches, and we repair them here. Um, if they're under warranty, we, we cover that warranty here. So yes, the answer is yes. Let's bring Mike in and see if he has any comments. Yeah, okay. Hey guys, who's I that sitting behind you? <laughs> I got my awesome wife here. She's been sitting sitting here listening listening in um that little piece of recovery kit uh or towing kit that you were talking about it's called a transit cluster um it's an excellent piece of recovery gear to carry four vehicles that don't have recovery points um, and they are great for static recoveries um, because they have different uh shapes that fit into different size holes in the frames um that fit uh, different types of vehicles because all manufacturers use different types of holes in the frame. So it's called a transit cluster uh, and they're not very expensive, but you can get it from any type of towing supply yeah. store. So what do you guys think about all that awesome information? How many of you guys have had the opportunity to look inside of a winch like that um, and see how all of those pieces work together? It really gives you a good idea or some insight into how to operate your winch also because of how all that different stuff uh, works. Now you've got a little bit better understanding. Um, so definitely make sure that uh, that you guys thank Clemson Four Wheel Drive Center and Warren for giving us the opportunity um, and their time to come in and do this presentation and provide this information for us. Um, just kind of on a side note, if you're new to the industry or kind of to the off-road world or you are just been in it for a long time, you can still learn something get in a class, right? Doesn't necessarily have to be through Morrison's Outdoor Adventures, but find a trainer to teach you on recovery. It will save your equipment. It will save the amount of money that you need to invest in your gear. Um, and it will make you look like the cool person on the trail when you do a cool recovery to get somebody safely back in place. So it's a skill that can't kind of be overlooked. So make sure you sign up for a class. If you're interested through a class with us, make sure that uh, you check out our website and our Facebook page, morrisonsoutdooradventures.com or just Morrison's Outdoor Adventures on Facebook. Um, and we will, as things kind of start opening up, start to share more classes um, in the future and rides and things like that. But again, uh, if you guys are not a member of Southern Four Wheel Drive, make sure you go to www.sfwda.org and become a member. Stop waiting. Stop watching me. Go sign up because your funds help keep Southern Four Wheel Drive uh, to fight the good fight of keeping our trails open. But thank you guys for joining in uh, tonight. We'll see uh, if Al and Brad have anything to share here. So, hey, Mike. Yeah. Would, would you be willing to come up to Clemson and teach us a class on winching? Most definitely. If we can find a location up here sometime? Most definitely. We could set up a class yeah. up there. I think Clemson Four Wheel Drive Center has a perfect parking lot for recovery training. Well, they've, they've been very gracious. They've let us do two of our tech nets from here so far. So uh, we'll maybe we'll do a winching class here in their parking lot or somewhere in the in the close by anyway. And we might even get out Brad into coming and taking another winch apart. Well, just keep taking just keep taking one part at a time off off of a 16.5 winch and just ship it to me <laughs> one part at a time. <laughs> okay. So close it out, Mike. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you join us again next Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern time, right? For our very next Tech Next session. Um, we'll be releasing the details on that. Again, chance to win BFG tires, chance to win cool swag gear. Uh, this week, we've got this stuff from Warren. So uh, thank you guys, and we will see you soon. Out here, Warren Industries stands for one thing, excellence. On the trail, on the slick rock, in the woods. Blending their good ideas with innovative thinking to help shape modern off-roading. 
Much of what they do feeds a hungry market of off-road enthusiasts. Once a product leaves Warren Industries, it's ready to go prepared.